Hey, happy Friday, Team Biosafe. I hope all y'all are doing well, staying safe, and uh, having a good Friday. Uh, it's uh, another fireside chat here with me, Zach the Grow Guy. And uh, today we're going to uh, be, hey, plant jazz seeds, hey, 3 go 3. Hope you guys are good. Uh, today we're going to be covering the use of Xeritol for propagation. Um, it is a very versatile product that allows guys to start clean, stay clean, so to speak. And no matter how you incorporate it into the starting process, it's definitely going to give you more success. Uh, first and foremost, you know, Xeritol is an awesome product that we recommend for plant-based disinfection. And it really is kind of the, uh, you know, be all end all when it comes to making sure that there aren't any pathogens present on plant tissue um, so that you can have the most success possible. Depends on, uh, you know, how you want to start your garden. Uh, for example, a lot of people are into pheno hunting and seeds nowadays. So uh, the utilization of Xeritol 2.0 at a 1 to 100 or 1% 1 solution for a seed soak is a great way to ensure that there is no residual pathogen transfer from uh, you know the initial seed source if that's a possibility and uh, really just allows them to crack more vigorously it's uh, you know what a lot of folks really like to do um, in traditional ag and have found you know really good success with it here in uh, both cannabis and hemp. Um, I've had a lot of growers that do, uh, you know, field sown hemp that do the seed soak at 1 to 100 or 37 mils per gallon and said that it has increased their germination and viability exponentially. Uh, you know, basically, Xeritol is also going to allow you to clean any, uh, you know, leftovers, so to speak. Uh, you know, Sanidate can also do this for you, but if we're just talking one product to get kind of everything done, uh, you can use Xeritol 2.0 to, you know, basically spray your domes, your trays, uh, you know, your plug holders, basically anything that is going to be reused in the propagation process can be sanitized with Xeritol 2.0, again, at that 1% solution, 37 mils per gallon. Uh, the sizzle sauce does its job, and if there is any residual, uh, you know, mold or algae or anything that could have caused issues through your last run of propagation, you can eliminate that. Um, in terms of actually using it for propagation itself, uh, right now, at this point, we're not necessarily talking about what kind of media we're going into, but just the process itself. I do recommend spraying Xeritol and oxyfos on your mother plants the day before you take your cuttings, if at all possible, uh, to impart that induced systemic response into the mother plants as well as disinfect those clones before they go into the dome to make sure that they are nice and sanitary to be able to do that transitional period with the least amount of pathogen pressure possible. Um, the thing that I really like to do as well, um, depending on if you can't make that oxyfos, uh, you know, pre-treatment with the Xeritol happen is uh, when you guys are actually taking your cuttings to uh, get yourself, you know, a decent sized cement mixing tub, reservoir, bucket, whatever, and uh, get yourself a piece of window screen. And when you're taking your cuttings, you know, instead of dunking one cutting at a time, which is going to take you all day and it's, you know, not going to be very effective, take... 50 cuttings, or however many of you are going to need to propagate your next round, put them on that piece of window screen and submerge them all at once. That way you're, you know, making the most of your time, you're treating multiple cuttings at the same time, which ensures a comparable level of sanitation throughout the entire process. Um, the other, you know, really nice thing about that is that, again, if there is any pathogens in the uh, environment, you're not transferring those into your dome, which, uh, you know, allows you to have another barrier prophylactic to help, you know, basically stop disease and pathogen transfer. Uh, once you have done the dunk, though, uh, that's when you would, you know, either go into your easy cloner or into your rooting hormone and then into your rock wool plug or, uh, you know, rapid rooter 
or uh, you know root riot or whatever it is that you're using to propagate your uh, your cuttings. Doing that pre disinfection is key. But one thing I do want to mention is when you're taking your cuttings, never let them go all the way upside down, because if the stems of your cuttings uh, are exposed to gravity. What happens is uh, called an air embolism, and just through gravity, a little air bubble gets pushed into that stem, and basically at that point, that clone is done. It's not going to be able to propagate itself past that point. Um, you're going to notice that it's going to start to yellow and never really grows roots. If you've had clones in the past that you know you take them out of the plug and they've never had uh, developed past the point of just being a cut and the bottom is kind of brown and slimy that is uh, caused by an embolism so whenever possible guys please try not to turn your cuts completely upside down because that's the root cause of that uh, issue uh, once they are actually in the media and established the utilization of uh, Zeratol uh, 1 to 250 or 15 ml is a great preventative during the cloning cycle. Um, it's good for algae growth or uh, you know any mold or mildew that could grow in the dome during the process because I know sometimes leaves aren't necessarily the healthiest when they go in there. This way you won't get any undesirable growth in the domes. Uh, so that 1 to 250 is definitely a safe spray during the process. But uh, what I've found is that if you put them in clean and you make sure that they are uh, you know, not only the plants, but the, uh, you know, tools and stuff are clean. You're going to be able to have a relatively easy clone cycle. And the more you mess with them, it seems like the worse that they really do. So if you can do stuff ahead of time to ensure that you're going to have a clean, you know, cloning environment and you're taking clean clones to put into that clean environment, start clean, stay clean, it, uh, it definitely helps you out and allows you to have the most successful run possible. But things do happen, so that 1 to 250 is a maintenance rate that is very effective for propagation uh, if and when needed. I really appreciate, you know, everybody tuning in again on Friday for another Fireside Chat. Um, I'm going to open up the floor at this point for any questions that you may have in regards to Zeratol 2.0 and propagation or just Biosafe Systems products as a whole. Um, I really hope that... You know, everybody's doing well and that uh, you've got good gardens going on and, you know, things are doing okay. Hey, Oog Tech. Hey, everybody that uh, joined, I apologize. It's, it's hard for me to stop in the middle and acknowledge everybody that comes on, but I really appreciate everybody that, uh, you know, does indeed check it out every Friday. And, you know, hopefully I have provided some tips to help you with your gardens. Uh, thanks again today for the topic. Um, it was DM to... Uh, Biosafe directly in terms of how do I use Zeratol in a propagation setting and what's the most effective way. Uh, hold on, we got a couple coming through, guys. Uh, Gas House is saying SOP when bringing in clones other than quarantine. Uh, what I would like you to do is put it in the uh, furthest room away from everything else with like a tent. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily want to neglect these plants, but uh, I don't want to say abuse is a good thing. But if we can make them, if anything's on them and they start hurting, you're going to see it sooner than if they were healthy plants. So putting them in a, a tent and being able to quarantine them is key. Uh, doing a dunk, full plant dunk, is definitely a good way to go. Um, whenever I bring in plants from other gardeners, what I will do is quarantine said plant. And then I will take clones off of that quarantined plant that I still quarantine, but then that's the stock that I run with. I've never, I don't take, you know, a root ball from somebody else and then incorporate it into my garden just because I've seen root aphids spread that way. And, you know, once you employ a preventative, uh, you know, IPM schedule for anything that's coming in, you can utilize the cuttings that you've taken yourself that you know are clean. And then the odds of something like root aphid goes, you know, way down in terms of potential contamination. Uh, second to none is saying, so I don't recommend dipping clones before. Uh, second to none, you, I do. If you can't do that uh, day before spray with the Zeratol and Oxyfos, uh, because of the fact that, uh, you know, you want to be able to have sanitized clones going into your dome. And so the cool thing about the Zeratol and Oxyfos combination is you're going to elicit an induced systemic response, which is like giving your plant a flu shot for about a period of 21 days. And if you can do that to the mother plant before you take the clones, you're going to have that, you know, period elicited 
throughout the cloning phase, so you're going to have a stronger plant from the jump. But if that's not an option for you, doing that uh, dunk at 1 to 250 with the screen, like I talked about earlier, is really going to allow you to make sure that, you know, there's no pathogen transfer from a mother plant into a propagation area. Uh, before you place it into the medium, you want to make sure uh, to basically put, uh, you know, your hormone on your cutting before you go into said media. Hoke Tech is saying, how do I get the fire on the TV? Netflix, man. Yule Logs, uh, something or other. I don't know. Fireside Chats with Zach. It works great, and I really appreciate him. Uh, RDL is saying, is warm water a must for green clean? Uh, depends on which green clean you're using, but typically you don't want to use too hot of water or too cold of water. Typically, I like to say if you can touch it, it's probably good to go. Um, if it's too cold for you to stick your hand in for a minute, that's too cold. If it's too hot for you to stick your hand in for a minute, that's probably too hot. But, you know, there is a, a very wide range of temperature that can be utilized with the products that's not as key as, like, alkalinity and pH. All right, guys. Well, I really appreciate you all tuning in. Thanks again. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and uh, just so that you know, next week I am off because of Thanksgiving, but I will be back after that, so, you know, keep sending in suggestions for the Fireside Chats on, uh, you know, Fridays, and uh, we'll keep answering questions, getting you guys taken care of, and just wanted to let you know, I really appreciate you, Team Biosafe, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.